make music for angry women. Men are like kind of like doofuses, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I kept getting to this point in these relationships where I was like, something is wrong. Then my therapist was like, you ever thought that maybe you're just a gay? <laughs> I already killed your dog. Oh, you like I already killed my Pomeranian. Are we trauma bonding? Yeah. As someone who's like really tatted, no matter what the f I do, I look like I beat people up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in an Afro Cuban religion. I've never heard of this. It's, it's all the same much shit, honestly. Let's be f***ing for real. Christ is tight. Christians be sucking sometimes. That's what I That's said. Just... It's all about how you say it, buddy. <laughs> I'm not touching touch you. Disgusting mitt. Wait, oh, I don't think you should intro you the want show. Want me to intro the show or nah, not? Nah, 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 nah. Because I think we gotta address the 552 pound elephant in the room before you do that. Sure. Our third co-host has been turned into a can of prime <laughs> energy, <laughs> which I don't know how you did it, how you pulled it off yeah. with that billion dollar brand ears, you and you and JJ. But George, yeah, George is blue raspberry prime energy. And, 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 you know, um, he's doing great. How, uh, what, he's got 100 10 calories. caffeines? 10, How many 10 caffeines? Calories, 200 milligrams of caffeine. 200 milligrams of caffeine. Electrolytes, B, B vitamins. Zero sugar. All right, how do, we, how, do we, how do we tell the audience? Tell the audience what? George, George is... No, no, it's not going to be like an easy, quick... It's, not, it's, it's easy and quick, but the, you got to deliver it right because they're going to think that you're lying. Can I say you, one thing of course. without being interrupted? I drank some Prime Energy before this. <laughs> <laughs> George's birthday was four days ago, and he chose to celebrate it uh, this weekend in Arizona with his family, so he couldn't make the podcast. That is a true story. I know everyone's going to think there's some sort of beef. We can FaceTime him. We actually, we're going to FaceTime, FaceTime him. And while you do that, I want to say this. I, I am completely cool with that. George, one of the things that I love about George is that he prioritizes his family yeah. and friends over anything. Yeah, he puts work, a, a, and job. God and everything above everything. So I'm not mad. It's George's birthday, and what George wants to do on his birthday is spend time with his family and friends. He yep. didn't want to come into Vegas, and we threw this together last minute. This wasn't on the. This wasn't really on the dock. I mean, that's that's the name of the game. Nature you know? of the show, bro. We we make an episode every week. There's gonna be some audibles, and and audibles that affect people's current schedules that sometimes are unable to be moved. And are George's we, birthday was unable to be moved. He's born on the same day every year. Are we scumbags for never missing a show, even though horrible things happen in our outside? And we yeah, just... absolutely, bro. We've prioritized our work <laughs> so over bad. everything. What kind of sick fuck does that? That's why we're fucking, we suck. We're the worst people ever. Can I introduce the show? Oh, I, I just thought it was like... He won't answer his FaceTime. Maybe he is actually pissed. Well, I would be pissed too if I was fired from the show. That I <laughs> oh my God. He's not fired. I turned him into a can of Blue Raspberry Prime. <laughs> Welcome back to Impulsive, the number one show in the world. Thank you guys for listening, watching, viewing, and subscribing. If you're not subscribed, hit that button for us. I, we have an amazing guest today. Uh, uh, this girl's a legend. An absolute legend. What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you going to, Caleb, are you going to let that slide? Did you not catch that? Am I the only one that caught that? Welcome back to Impulsive, the number one show in the world. Did you just I actually? I, Roll the clip. I don't. I didn't say that, bro. Roll the clip. We'll cut it out. Cut no, that out. no, Did no. I say show? Yes. You're the audio guy. He, no one else got it. Okay, <laughs> I need you to redo that, and I want to say the reason I caught that is because my current like diet regimen and and discipline is so strong You're because sharp. of my 75 hard that I'm doing. I'm eating in this small window. I can't. I have to drink a gallon of water. Work out twice a day. Say say what you said. Read ten pages of book a day. Nonfiction. Every have day. no fun. If if anyone catches Mike having fun, he has to start over his seventy five <laughs> days. Welcome back to Impulsive, the number one show in the world. If you're not listening, watching, <laughs> the number one show in the world is pr The Price Is Right. So if you if you think that we've surpassed that, then you could roll with it. But otherwise, I would prefer that you did the right intro. Welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. The price is right. If you're not, <laughs> <laughs> we have an amazing guest today. Her name's Kalani. Uh, I, I I wouldn't intro her just yet. Wait till she's here. Yeah. Do you want to shoot the shit? I think we have to. But my, I'm, I now I really wish George wasn't a can of Blue Raspberry Prime. If you're a Kalani fan, and you've clicked on this episode, and Oof. and you are stuck, <laughs> it's the first ten minutes of this episode, and you're stuck with two fucking babbling idiots. Hyenas. Babbling hyenas talking about their friend being turned into an electrolyte drink. Sorry. What do you do? What do you do? Or sorry, I guess. We started early. 
you know, we're feeling ourselves. So we're just gonna we're just gonna wait here until Kalani shows up. I, are we gonna talk like in the meantime, or should we just? Yeah, we could. T- yeah, we could talk. Can do you, you can see it in real time, so we could address it now. But does my skin even look better? Like, Caleb, does my skin look good right now? Absolutely. Like, shiny and shit? Absolutely. That's from the water intake and the diet, too, I think. I've been, since I started this, so I started this on January 1st, I have been in bed, asleep, by 10 o'clock every single night. It's you, shocking. You know this. You it's were at my house for a good amount of the time. Yeah. I can't believe you're doing this. And I've been waking up at 7 in the morning just ready to go, dude. It's disgusting. I hear pots and pans clanking around super early i'm trying to rest in my, in my house in my room or my room in my house <laughs> uh, sorry your house in your room but so, i've i've really made it my own we we have we uh we give our room me and nina give our room that you've lended us a nice touch and that that touches splooge everywhere besides that it looks like a bomb just went off yeah you guys are the worst we've talked about it on the show before your guys are terrible horrible house guests Mikey sent me a mean text. He sent me a mean text. Oh, day. read it. Read it out loud. Oh, it's in your other canceled phone. No, no, no. One. No, oh, no, you no. screened it. He said, Brody, I love you, but I got to say this as politely as possible. When you come and take over my house, clean your fucking shit up. I don't roll like this. You guys are a train wreck. The kitchen, the living room, there's ramen bowls spilled all over, fucking balls of dog hair all over the floor, cough syrup and everything else under the sun. It's just not going to fly anymore. You're more than welcome to be here, but you can't trash it anymore, and it's completely disrespectful, and I hate that I even have to say this shit. Now, look, I said, my bad, I didn't even notice. I'll clean it. I'll come clean up. You did, and he went That's on up. me. He did. However, can I, can I give one pushback? Caleb, go ahead and zoom into the, the shit storm that Mike is describing. What? No. Oh, you took a picture of it? Oh, here, here's the issue. So before I sent that message to you, I cleaned up the shit storm, which is what I always do. All the ramen, all the sushi, all the shit that was all over the place. Sometimes your ass needs to be checked. No, 100%. And, and I will say this too, because we haven't gotten a chance to address it on the show. Back when all that drama was going on, I don't know what will be going on with it now. I've been getting a ton of shit for being a dick licking cocksucker well, that, to Logan Paul. And what's let me, fucking Yeah, new, but let me Mike? say something, and I want you to attest to it right here and right now. Nobody... Licks my gives cock you more, more than my- nobody gives you more shit, calls you a disrespectful cum dumpster more than me. I am on your shit 24 7 saying, Yo, you gotta fucking become a human. This is the year you need to become a human. I texted you that. I said, 2023 is the year you become an actual human being. And people give me so much shit that damn Meat Canyon video with those big ass ears, bro. Did you watch it? Yeah, and and you know what? It's so partially good. my. It was fantastic. Meek Cannon is one of the greatest animators. Shout out to Meek Cannon. His animation. I was f- crying. My family was <laughs> messaging me like, "What is this? This is hilarious." <laughs> um, I I feel like I do a great job checking you, but I think what I do is I fuck up when I sit here on the show because I I try to keep things lighthearted, and so people think that I am supporting always and this and that. But I I. I feel very good about how much I check you on the shit that you need to be checked on. And you need to be checked on a lot, bro. A lot. I, I'm, mad, I'm mad at you today. I'm mad at you today, bro. I'm mad at me today. I lost 15K on, on, on Bet in Black right before I came here like a fucking idiot. I even said when the ball was spinning, I put it on, I put it on red, it hit black. I said, I don't have a good feeling about this. I knew it. I'm mad at me, bro. Join the, join the club. I'll see you in the comment section, brother. <laughs> Where the fuck is Kilani, dude? No, she's coming. Oh, oh, sorry. Can huh? we? Oh, oh, sick. Oh, to get her? Can can I pop back in on this uh, seventy five hard real quick? Yeah. So so Andy uh, Frizella came up with the seventy five hard program, and the the reason I'm doing it is not for like any specific purpose outside of the fact that a a insane disciplinary plan at certain points in your life can be very beneficial to your life. And I mean, this one really is crazy. Like this one is outside of my bounds of acceptability in Mm. terms of like what I actually want to fucking do every day. But there's just something about saying no to everything Mm. and being able to live by that for a certain amount of time that one proves to you that you can do that. That that's that's the biggest thing for me. Right. It, it, and you, you've you, done this type of shit. Because you can prove to yourself that you're able to do it should you decide. 
granted, I was going to ask, what actual results are you <laughs> yielding real time? Because you don't, you don't actually... Like, are you more productive? You, the, that, surely you feel better health-wise, but like, what's the actual only to benefit? an extent? To be honest, yeah, with you, right? because I'll explain it to you, and I and I I want to show the pros and cons of the of the program. I'm I I have some obviously innate mental disabilities, and I generally and and maybe this is one of the reasons why you do programs like this. But I use crutches in my life, such as eating foods that I enjoy or, or, you know, Mm. you know, skipping a day in the gym or whatever Mm. to make myself feel better. Mm. And so my skin is glistening right now. I mean, some of these pictures I'm taking in the gym, you're seeing them are fucking great. Like, like there's real progress. You've been looking that good on Instagram. I know that. I bet bet these porn stars this weekend. Love, (laughs) love that. We'll move into that right now. But, but basically what I'm saying is, there's pros and cons to everything. You may you may find that those comforts in life are the things that actually. Do you want to be a disciplinarian, a author, author, you know, authoritarian, successful, you know, um, leader in all aspects of life, or do you want to be happy, or do you want to find the balance? And mm. I felt like I was in the balance mm. prior to mm. this program, and now I'm starting to lean further in this direction. And so this is going to be what I have to play with uh. in terms of what I actually want. Uh. When you when you start a, a, a goal, or when you start a program at the beginning of the year or any time of the year for yourself, whether it's weight loss, not drinking, not doing drugs, whatever, the why you're doing it has to be the main thing on your mind always. Mm. What is your goal? Why am I doing this to myself? Why am I putting myself through this strenuous of a program? And for me, unfortunately, in this current situation, I know Andy has a has a ton of ways to combat this. I don't have a specific goal. I'm not going into a fight. I'm not looking to have these crazy abs. I yeah. do fine with my dad bod. I want to be healthy, but I don't think I'm unhealthy normally. So it's no no goal, huh? That makes it that makes it harder, I assume. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm getting at. Do you know that Andy guy who created the 75 great, hard yeah. program you're on? Sure. He was the guy who gave me the fake Lambo for my brother's <laughs> birthday prank. It was his Lambo. <laughs> when my brother gave me the Lamborghini and promised me, right? It was the it, you know the best birthday gift I'd ever received. I told him I said this is the happiest day of my life. I cried tears of joy. My brother gave me a Lamborghini. All of a sudden, this fucking Andy guy comes up and he goes, "Hey, bro, can I get the keys to my car back?" And then Jake said, "April Fools," and they all laughed at me. Do you still have PTSD from that a little Actually, bit? Actually, yeah. Because I feel like that, like, as funny as it is, kind of contributed to the sh- to shrimp gate. Yeah, for sure. Because, <laughs> of course, because I tell everyone, don't get me gifts on my birthday, on Christmas. I don't need your shit. I don't need your shit because people just have a hard time giving without... Expectations. expectations happy new year from our friends over at manscaped the ball is officially dropped but that doesn't mean you have to drop the ball on your balls in 2023 whether you had a new year's kiss or not the leaders in below the waist grooming have you covered for your much needed resolution of bringing sexy back join the 7 million men worldwide who trust manscaped with our exclusive offer go to manscaped.com and use the code logan for 20 percent off plus free shipping let us have a toast for a new year new you and a new you with no pubes this year take your package to the next level with the performance package 4.0 and other premium wet goods Inside the Performance Package 4.0, you'll find the signature Lawn Mower 4.0. The advanced skin-safe technology reduces cuts and nicks on your delicate parts. It also comes equipped with a 4,000K LED spotlight that will shine a light to the promised land 2023 looks to be. These products are the absolute perfect follow-up after your New Year's gym sessions. Cheers to the new balls in 2023. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code LOGAN at manscaped.com. 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code LOGAN. Time to feel sexy and free this 2023 with Manscaped. Now back to the show. Our guest today is the Grammy-nominated artist who continues to redefine what it means to be an R&B star. If you didn't catch it already, the last leg of the Blue Water Road trip about to start in support of the Blue Water Road, a Blue Water Road, the album, repping the Bay Area. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to say it's Kehlani. Wow. <laughs> yes. Here, here, here. Oh, hi, y'all. Hey. Oh, imagine I just knocked the whole shit over. I know. Shit, shit goes wrong a lot in this podcast. <laughs> I, I think the entire podcast is actually... A, Probably a mistake in general. Doesn't feel like one today. We got a big star. Actually, on the show. so true. <laughs> this, is, this episode is going to be great. You like wearing the headphones? I do. I feel like I can hear you guys how I'm supposed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's what podcasts are for. I feel like I get in the vibe when I have these on and I can hear the breaths of my partners and co hosts, <laughs> colleagues. Just in right here doing my ASMR. I like it. I have a really funny st- uh, story to start this off with. So we're, we're here at AVN right now, uh, AVN Awards. It's an adult news 
adult video news awards, right? Mm -hmm. Kehlani's performing. You performing yeah. this evening? Tonight, yeah. yeah. Right? So I used to actually uh, have this relationship with an adult star. Okay. Right? I don't know how much you, you follow the industry and stuff. Yeah, but... no, I don't know anyone. Okay, okay. That you, don't, makes... you don't know Lana Rhodes? Well, I wasn't going to say her no. name. But really? that makes it easier. Too. I know like two of them, and then I I literally freaked out when I saw them, and I was like, I've seen you guys once, and I kind of had a crush. <laughs> wait, wait, who are the two that, that you uh, know? Kieran, K Kira Noir. Okay. Oh yeah. And no. Demi Sutro. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were both together, so I was like, <laughs> love y'all, nice. gotta go. Nice. <laughs> so when I was when I was uh, dating this girl, um, I, we we used to have kind of like a little bit of like a toxic relationship okay and we would we would get in these like little like nuanced like fights over kind of dumb shit from time to time yeah and i would never know if when i went to her house if she was actually like mad at me mm -hmm. so sometimes i would roll in and and i knew that we were in a fight but she'd be like hey babe what's up like well mm -hmm. you know like hope you're having a good day and then sometimes i would come in the house and she would be playing Kehlani. Oh, oh. oh shit. was that the subliminal, like, I'm pissed? <laughs> I'm pissed. <laughs> and I knew as soon as I opened that door and, and I heard that song <laughs> on. I love that. I was like, I am in trouble. So I got to ask you, do you make music for angry women? <laughs> I make music. I make all kind of music for I, you know what I don't. I don't even like to categorize women as angry because I think why don't we talk about what y'all did that pissed them off? By the way, we definitely did something. You're right. Yeah, no, they're not angry. Ain't nobody just walking here mad for no reason. Um, but I make music for people who experience a whole range of emotions. And um, if they if I happen to be pissed off when I made a song and the, the bitches can relate, I, you you might want to apologize because you clearly did something. It was one of the reasons I was so excited to have you on the show uh, because I really respect your journey. Thank you. I, I think it's super admirable. You've 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 been in the trenches. You've made it out. And um, as someone who I'm not an artist like you, but I definitely have you know some a creative bone in my body. Mm. But I was always afraid to really take that leap. Yeah. Early on, like mm -hmm. we're the same age, twenty seven. Yeah, I believe. Tight. And I, I twenty seven club. Yeah, I'm horrified. You guys have to keep <laughs> going. We're fine. We're good. I, When's your birthday? When are you turn twenty eight? April first. Oh, I'm, I'm April twenty fourth. We good? We gonna no make way. it to May? Yeah, we good. We good. We're gonna <sighs> make it past. I don't April. know. We got we got four months to go. We're fine. We're right. making it through Vegas for way too many days. Like we're you're right. This is a sign. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm jumping off the top of the stratosphere tomorrow. Do either of you guys want to join? I actually really want to, but I, I pinched a nerve in my back and I'm scared that bungee jumping is going to like crack me is, further. Is it bad? It's not too bad, but I was lifting wrong and then just, uh, yeah. That's, are you, are that's you, a shit injury. Yeah. Horrible. It's it's really light. It's really okay, light, okay. but it's been the same for two weeks straight. But you're not going to go jumping off a pyramid? No. <laughs> well, no, I only <laughs> ask because that that seems like something you wouldn't want to do if you're 27 trying to turn 28. You yeah. know what I'm saying? No, like, I actually, so I had a plan to do that. Like I wanted to do it. Me and my oh, other really? friend who didn't come down here with me is very geeked up. We wanted to do it. And then I thought about it and was like, well, that might make my back worse when I'm here for a show. I'm, doing, I'm doing it with uh, this girl, Emily Willis, who's another adult star. She's, she'll be presenting tonight and is up for a bunch of awards. We we ha used to have a, a pretty big crossover on this show. We've had Riley Reed on and my ex-girlfriend and a bunch of other people in the space. And I've always had a really big crossover with the adult space. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm curious what your connection is to the space outside of the two girls that you know and, and how you feel about their work and, and so on and so forth. Well, I honestly think I got asked because I make sexual ass music. But <laughs> <laughs> um, beyond that, I did do a video. Uh, I directed a video and you know, with the amazing director, he actually passed away recently. So I'm gonna give him that shout out. He's amazing, RP. Mm. Um, for a song I have called "Can I," in which I highlighted um, OnlyFans, like we did it as like a OnlyFans cam girl like style video. Mm. And instead of me being the sex worker in it, I just actually got a bunch of actual, you know, women with OnlyFans who actually do that as their job. And then at the time, there was like a kind of a boycott situation going on because you know. People were crossing over and taking up the space that people that sex workers had built as you know yes. built the platform it was, up. It was the Bella Thorne thing. Uh huh. Yeah, and then yeah. I basically just like got someone who was really educated on the subject to like write me a passage and kind of like dedicated it to those women and highlighted them and just said you know like be mindful when you're entering these spaces that you have to also uplift so that we don't take up the wrong space and so. I think that that's probably why they Got it. also picked me because I mm. I just have an immense respect for what everybody's doing. You're a friend of the industry. Yeah, I enjoy it. Like I enjoy it. I respect, and I ultimately I respect it. So that's kind of where I've been on it too. And I think like a lot of people, 
uh, we'll see guys at these type of events and and think and everybody's assume, creeped out. Yeah, yeah, yeah like why like, is he yeah, here? Yeah. <laughs> why assume, are you here? Well, Michael? obviously you know, but I'm fr I'm friends with all the girls. I'm friend friends with Tiana yeah. Trump and Riley and all all these girls. No, all a lot of people with I'm with are like friends with him. For yeah, sure, like, but but somebody asked me yesterday. They were just like they were like, why do you um you know w what's the point of making content with the girls? And I was like, these are, these girls are quite literally some of the coolest chick like like girls I've ever and met they have in my life. Other things to offer. And yeah. that's what we've always tried to show is, yo, they have favorite music. They have favorite movies. Yeah. They play instruments. They like to they travel. They have degrees and shit. Like, mm -hmm. they have, they're fucking smart. Yep, like, absolutely. Hustlers. I'm, I I respect it and yeah. applaud it. Yeah. Like, like, being able to make money nowadays is, is hard. Yeah. It's, like, success is tough. Yeah. And, and the creativity and the ways they got there, I mean... Get that, get yeah, that, get that I work, girl. Go for it. it. I was, I want to say something nice, though. I, say, I, oh I got, yeah, I got we interrupted you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we're the same age. But I, Kilani, I never had the, the balls to take that leap when I wanted to, you know, be an entertainer. I, yeah. I did my year in college, and um, I have so much respect for artists who do take that leap, and I, and you did. Thank you. You did, with no plan B. Yeah. That had to be the scariest thing ever. It was. Trying to do music, unsure of what your future looks like. Yeah. And I'm sure no one around you growing up wanted to do what you did. Yeah, no, it was definitely like, uh, I guess we're putting all our eggs in this basket. And I always made really drastic, chaotic moves towards it. Mm. Like I literally was just talking this morning because my friend had hit me up like, what's that burger spot you used to work at in Oakland? <sighs> I was like, Park Burger. She was like, yeah, that, that was crazy. That was so quick. And I was like, yeah, I don't even think I picked up my last check because I got the call to like come no to LA and make some music. And I was like, I'm just going to go. And I like literally never went back. I never. How old it. were you at the time? 17. See, that's insane. Yeah, 17. I was like, I'm just going to go to LA. And I called and I was like, I'm not going to hold you. I live here now. Like, I'm not coming back Damn. to work. And they were like, you don't want to come get your check. And I was like, honestly, <laughs> no, you can just give it to someone. Else. Respect. And that was during, was that during the pop life days? Or that was, was right it? after. Got it. Got yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Cause you were in a group called Pop Life. Mm -hmm. You were on America's Got Talent, right? Yeah. yeah. And then what happened in between, you know, that like kind of semi bump that then sent you back to Oakland to 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 do to be at the burger spot again? Like, what um, was that journey like? I mean, we were just like we were a band from like thirteen to sixteen, and the end of it kind of was all like Pop America's Got Talent was like the middle part of it. It was like the peak. And then we came back and then, you know, I mean, you watch those shows and you don't often really see mm. people from those shows like, actually on. continue. We, we just didn't have that same like cushion developed in social media yet where I feel like now people go on like The Voice or things mm. like that and they can like leave and there's all this social media available to like push yourself after. But Instagram had just started. Like I literally remember Instagram being like at the beginning when I was in pop life. So we came off and it was just like a natural kind of like what do we do now? We, we 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 had to go back to school. Like I had to go graduate school and fucking be a kid. Mm. <laughs> and then we found out a lot of shitty business things were happening with the band. And I was like, if this is what music is, I don't really want to do this. So I just got a couple jobs. I worked at Hot Topic. I worked at Cream, the ice cream store. Love Hot Topic, by <laughs> the way. Sold some weed. Like <laughs> I did all the little like thing. I was just trying to survive and, and and graduate high school, to be honest. And then I started getting calls to come to LA and try things and I just started going. What do you think it was? Was it your voice? Like there was a pop that happened. Who recognized what? Oh, uh, well, Nick Cannon actually literally was like, I remember you from America's wow. Got Talent. There's like a clause of time that they have to pass to like, for, for, before they can like reach out like from that side of things. And he was Got like, it. I've been watching you. Like, you're great. Like if you want to come try some things down here, there's like some people you can work with and things mm. like that. And we kept trying to like, try different ways of making it work, whether it was like a group setting or like just me and things like that. And then um, I met my manager and we, he literally came back to me after meeting with me for one day um, and I played him some music and he came back the next day and was like, hear me out. I have a six month plan. And if we do everything in this six month plan, you can call me your manager or will you call me your manager? Uh. And then we can see what it does. And everything he said in six months, we, we did. So. You're lucky you got a good team early. Oh, yeah, man. I would, I would literally we would be together forever. How long? Same, how same long? one. Same yeah. one, huh? <laughs> by the way, he's, he's, I sent him a cold email, like, what, yesterday? Two days ago? Yeah. To get you on the show. And I, I, no, he's I'm on it. Super appreciative. Thanks he's for coming on. on. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. How long have you guys been working together now? 
Since 2013 or 14. Damn, Sharp. that's like not very often that that type of longevity. Yeah, happens literally in never space. even had like a like a big. We've never even had like. I mean, I feel like we maybe argued probably twice. Like on some serious, we're actually the problem. Like I, I could be like a little bitchy sometimes. Like <laughs> I'm tired. I'm hungry. I don't feel like doing something. But that's what you, that's the relationship we're supposed yeah. to have. But yeah. also, that's what makes a good manager because he knows how to work with that type of situation. Exactly. And you know? afterwards, I I do something that I'm like. I was too tired to do. And he's like, aren't you glad you did it? I'm like, you're right. <laughs> you're right. I'm glad we did this. Nah, you got to trust him big time. Yeah. I know how hard it is uh, to keep that fire alive for your passion yeah. when, when, when you are struggling. Did it stay alive? Or was there a time where you felt like this music thing might not be for you? There's times all the time. I mean, still, still to this day. I mean, that's just the world changes all the time. Mm. Like I had a baby, like. Congrats. Thank you. My understanding of family and like priorities in life is different. Like what I want out of life is different. I'm at this point now where I'm like my kid and my friends and my spiritual life and, and surfing and things like that have become like what I prioritize. And like music is just this driving force that like I get to go dip into as a, you know, when I'm feeling really creative. Mm. But it, it, it stopped being that like I eat, sleep, breathe, die for this, like probably around the time I, before I had a baby. Really? We, we talked about this before you came on because this show has a third co-host named mm. George and he's incredible. And he's not here today because he skews on the other side of the spectrum that me and Logan skew towards always working. Today's his birthday. He's spending it with oh, his family. Happy birthday. We love you, yeah, George. Yeah, we love you, Georgie. And, um, and I guess a, a question to piggyback off of that for you is like, what are, what are those moments in life that you're like, yo, I'm not, I'm not willing to risk this moment for anything. I don't care if it's the Super Bowl calling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, what are those moments for you? Um, I'm, I haven't experienced it with my child yet because she's only three. Yep. Um, but I, I would not be missing like graduations. Mm -hmm. I would not be missing like even if it's freaking preschool, high, kindergarten. Like, I don't care. Um, recitals, things like that. It's really like these moments for her because I had an absent parent, so I, 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 and I know I work, and she understands that. Like. She's a super understanding three-year-old. Like she's like, you're going to work. It's great. Like I love, uh -huh. I love when you sing. Like it's hard. Uh -huh. We're getting to that point now where she's like, just don't leave the house. And I'm uh -huh. like, just come with me. Um, but I won't be missing like those milestone moments in her life for sure. Like I don't care. You had her at rel relatively young, twenty-four ish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ish. Yeah. As a twenty-four-year-old, I imagine you know the experience of birthing a human was was oh, yeah. one thing in itself but how did you see your priorities shift and was it like super palpable at the time yeah i mean you just it's i think what's even more palpable is not just the like priorities that are like physical or like job related mm -hmm. it's like emotional priorities like i can't let anybody make me a hothead for no reason like i'm not risking losing my mind in front of my kid. Like I, nobody can get me all sad and depressed. Like there's just all these little things where I'm like, at the end of the day, like my daughter has to look at me and see this like happy, joyous, motivated, energizing person because that's the parent that I want to be. Uh. I'm not saying that all parents have to just like put on a happy face all the time, but I know that I want my child to remember me as like full of life and like fun and like creativity and like energy. So I can't really let too many things like derail me because that's how I want to show up for her. Does that does that put pressure on you sometimes when you are going through something that is stressing you out, whether it be, you know, a relationship or something with work where you feel like you have to come back home and make sure that you're in that space? And how do you get back to that space when you feel yourself start to go off the tracks? Um, I mean, I let myself feel it. I, I just try to not go through that experience in front of her. Um, but I'm just I have a really a really good self-regulation gauge at this point i think like i'll go surf or i'll go to the gym or i'll watch something funny like i have a pretty good understanding of how to like get myself back on track um especially as a very spiritual person and just i prioritize that so like i got those tools down early um even to the point where like i can regulate on tour finally and mm. like, I, I imagine you have to be able to do that you oh, for sure. what it took me so long yeah. too that you get to that weird middle point of tour where like everything feels monotonous and like everything is just a little like you don't know what day it is mm. and where you are and where you're going on this tour we were bored and we decided to have a pajama day sick <laughs> so the entire <laughs> the entire tour team the opener us on stage and the audience majority of the audience came in pajamas sharp that's, yeah that's we, cool. and we literally were like we were gonna do a whole like spirit week thing but then after that we were like that's just od like it's too much to yeah. think about <laughs> 
But it was cool. It was a way to like, you just saw the energy shift on tour after that because everybody was like excited again. They were you like, gotta oh, we, got a, we got a day to be silly. And then we're like, we're refreshed. Yeah. So. I went, on the, on the uh, daughter thing, just to ask um, one more question. Are you, um, and I'm asking this for a reason, but are, are you raising her alone? No. Oh, you're not. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I have an amazing, amazing co-parent. Got He's it, the got best. It. He's the best dad ever. He's actually like too good of a dad. Like I, we split her so evenly. That like if I'm like no I want to take her mm. for like a couple more days he's like no those are my days <laughs> oh no way <laughs> um, but obviously we're flexible and because I'm gone more and so when I get I get enough time he lets me have her for the same amount of time that I was gone for and things like that but super supportive we have we're like best friends like we have amazing energy like it's it's pretty perfect great honestly. did you guys had would you did I'm assuming you guys had intended to be together no I was like you no 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 not really we, it was like. It was like a 90% friendship and it was a 10% romantic for a second. Mm. But we were friends for a while before. And then I looked at him one day and I was like, basically my manager told me I was about to have my first break. He was like, you're about to have your first year off since we started. Go travel, go do all this stuff. My brain baby. went, kid. <laughs> <laughs> my brain went, duh, baby. <laughs> and I literally remember we were, I was performing at Toronto Pride. And after the Pride, I was like, y'all, I'm having a baby. And they were like, what? And I was like, yeah, no, I'm like, I'm going to go track my cycle right now and I'm going to start trying. And I literally told my baby daddy and I was like, what's up? Let's have a kid. You'd be a great dad. I'd be a great mom. Wow. Like, he was like, fuck no, you're crazy. The next day he was like, I'm down, honestly. <laughs> Yo. So it was really crazy, man. I was like, he um, just flipped. I have my money together. Yeah. Like, I'm a passionate person. I'm going to be a fantastic mom. You're going to be a fantastic dad. Like, let's do it. This has just been kind of happening more and more these days. Like I, I find, think it's I, the future. I think you, everybody's going to do it. People are finding like these like genetic matches, realizing, yo, both of the parents are are mentally, financially stable yeah. and want to both have a kid, but like don't put all of the eggs into the basket of, yo, we're going to be together forever because that may be unrealistic at this point. Yeah, but I mean, we both want to. I don't want to like ever front on him and make it seem like it wasn't a little bit romantic. Like we, it was for a second, but my, the time period was giving mostly friends and like, <laughs> Maybe like a month or some weeks of like it being <laughs> kind of sexual and us being like, this is still feel like a little sexual friendship. Uh, and then we became family. It's this, so sick. <laughs> this seems like a good parlay too. You uh, don't only have relationships with men. I don't have any relationships with men anymore. I've been out as a lesbian for two years. Two, two years now. Mm -hmm. How has that changed your your life and your everything. romance and everything? I want to ask you about the differences between dating oh, men. Oh, there's so many differences. Um, I quite frankly just thought like maybe I was like some, like broken. And like I wasn't like the ability to dissociate in a relationship and during sex and with connection. And I, th I thought maybe I had just like been through too much mm. or like I just like I wasn't meeting the right people. I kept trying and like I was idealizing all the connections I was making like this. This is great. And I still ke I kept getting to this point in these relationships where I was like, something is wrong, you know, and it, it's even beyond like the the heartbreaks that were happening like it was beyond like what people like being cheated on or like these things that were happening in the relationship i was going through these things long before that was even happening i'd get cheated on the relationship would be over and i'd be like damn like three months ago i was already like what is happening why mm -hmm. don't i want to have sex why don't i want to why don't i feel that deeply like what is why am i losing the spark that i had initially am i just like a freaky conqueror complex having ass like i'm just doing this to see if i can then my therapist was like, how do you feel about women? I was like, if a girl looks at me, I'm I'm going to melt into a puddle. No way. Or like I would just, I, I would have conversations with other people who like women. I feel we felt the same way, but I could not say those things about men. Um, and she was like, you ever thought that maybe you're just a gay? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're right. Actually, probably. <laughs> what a what a funny way to get there. I mean, everyone has their own journey, but it didn't strike you first personally like, hey, I may be skewing this direction. I mean, I was always bi as hell. So it wasn't uh, like uh, ever uh. like I didn't go from being straight to being a lesbian. Like right. I was I was bi been bi my whole life. I've always had girlfriends like I've always, you know, but actually what's even funnier is that what really did it was after the therapy call, I got sent a Google Doc titled Am I a Lesbian? And it talks about comp het, which is compulsory heterosexuality. And it's, which is all about like how society has influenced so much, you know, heteronormativity yeah, it's, it's, it's and heterosexuality like funneled, on funneled us. Funneled your own personal thoughts down it. Yeah. That a lot of us, especially women and femme presenting people, 
struggle with even knowing if that's our actual sexual orientation or if it's what we've been taught taught and, yeah. and trained to be. And I read the fuck out of this Google Doc and was like, when I had to list and analyze like why I was still dating men, mm. none of it had to do with being in love. None of it had to do with like these feelings that I'm supposed to feel and like love and care and deep emotion. It was like, this makes sense. And this, all my friends are like, he can take care of you. And like, this is financially secure. Mm. And like this, he's a protector. And like, why pick a fence, dad, mom thing, you know? And even though I grew up like with my family super open and queer and like all the relationships being really different. And like, I still had that, like, this makes sense thing kind of going. And as soon as I like, said I'm not you know I'm not doing that anymore and I'm, I came out my relationships and my ability to like feel deeply for anybody I'm romantically with it was like oh I've been missing this my whole life uh, even that, though I had I had girlfriends so when I had girlfriends yes but once I completely was like yes let me accept myself it was like these floodgates opened. that had to be a great feeling yeah I mean I feel like I experience emotions deeper across the board now so I don't know if this is disrespectful, but w <laughs> would you ever go back? To I was men? gonna. That was my next question. No, I feel like this, I don't feel like there's any questions that are like that crazy unless they're on purposely disrespectful. Uh, no, of course not. No, that was yeah. curious. Sexuality is so fluid, well, fluid spectrum, nowadays. Yeah. I mean, I think the way that gender is so fluid with people, like mm. in the way that I feel like that would work for me, is if I had a partner who was a woman and then they transitioned. I see. At some point, I would still hold that space for my partner. Unless I really felt like at some point that would not work for my sexual identity. And that's and that's specific to the person. Mm. But I also at the same time would probably be like, I'm a lesbian and you're a man and maybe you should be with somebody who wants to be with a man. Because um, I'm not actively seeking out any kind of man at this point. Uh, right, 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 right. Um, but I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like leave my partner if I was, if I really loved them and they transitioned. You're in a relationship now? I am. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. Congrats. Awesome. Do you have any? Do you have any uh, <laughs> like uh, bad feelings or like ill feelings towards men in general, or like ha ha is there any part of you that Am feels I part like, of the she men a woman hitters club? I mean, I men hitters club. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe not that much. But do you feel like there's any part of like the the male treatment of either you or just like women in general that pushed you towards the the place that you're in right now? No, it wasn't a hatred. It was just me really understanding who I love. Mm. It wasn't like, dang, I hate men. They suck. I'm going to go like girls because the girl, some girls will do you dirtier than a guy. I was going to, I was going to ask. Oh my God. The, women the, are yeah. fucking vile. Like <laughs> it's like men are like a, like kind of like doofuses. I feel like. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> this is so true. Like it's like <laughs> it's a so doofus true. is like, well, I'm not going to say y'all don't know what you're doing. Cause y'all be fucking up and y'all know what you're doing. But like, what do you mean? The women, no. It's like so deep and calculated. And like, there's just, I feel like the ways in which women have hurt me sometimes has just been so, in, there's so many more levels to mm. it. Um, and I don't know if that's just because I like them more, but like it's just the capability I feel like is different. But I don't want to also like say that like women are worse than men because they love better to me, in my opinion. Like the pros are pro that's what growing I, for, for sure. sure. I was going to ask you about that. I, I wanted to say that saying, uh, what is it? Hell hath no fury like a scorned woman. Oh <laughs> like, my God. yo, I've been on the Girls receiving. Girls will fuck you up. For sure. <laughs> Don't go gay because you don't like guys. Like, that's not going to do. All right, well, well, that actually, that actually, you should go gay because you don't like guys. <laughs> don't go gay because a man hurts you. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. What do women do better? both uh from a relationship standpoint in the bedroom if you want to get into yeah. it and just in general fr from a loving standpoint um i think when we think about the energy of femininity versus masculinity which even like mask women still have that feminine that major feminine presence um and if they identify as a woman then they're a woman um it's just it's the same things you guys would say it's the softness, it's the tender, mm, it's, the, it's mm. the care, it's the attentiveness, it's a, a deeper, I feel like, understanding of life, which I feel like is a part of like the feminine energy because we all have the feminine and the masculine, but those are specific traits of what is the like the divine feminine energy, not to get like that, but. So in, if someone is a woman, they embody all of that, like that's their natural. So two women being able to share that experience together, I feel like is like, a whole mind warp of like what love is. And I don't feel like I even understood that until I started having like deep, long, like meaningful relationships with women. 
tactically, what advice could you give to some alpha male out there right now that's just sharpening a fucking sword in a cave <laughs> and like rubbing rocks together and they're like, oh, I'm gonna provide for this family. But oh, the yeah. but the wife's at home like, yo, this dude has no idea what the fuck he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> like like what's some advice you could give these dudes to like get them to a point where they're actually like satisfying their woman with that, with that, with what they would what they want, I guess. What's funny is I feel like a lot of the traits that women are looking for in men is like feminine traits like mm. they need to adopt their femininity and that means the softness and the attentiveness and the tenderness and the care like I don't know too many women who when they're saying that they don't want like that whole conversation of like I want a manly man who does this and this and this I don't think that that means that they don't want the tenderness and the care and the As support well. and the attentiveness they might be talking about some like sexual power sexual presence mm. or like fucking you might beat somebody up if they talk to you crazy in the street. Like that, maybe that's what they're talking about. But I think a lot of men like canceled that part of themselves out to like honor the other side. Like, right. You can defend your woman in the street and also like sit down and ask her if she needs anything. And like, if she wants to talk about something or like give what her what she wants. And yeah. Notice that she's tired. And so take over when she's tired. Like it's things like that. And I feel like a lot of men, I know a lot of, you know, cis straight men don't, often f flow through both it's like a balance right because you have you want the the woman probably wants the man to be able to provide on the on the masculine side and the feminine side yeah. and the and the man wants the woman to provide on the soft gentle side but also reprimand the kids reprimand him when he's doing some fucked yeah. up shit like it's like a balance where both people need to kind of meet in the middle I, I i think i'm by no means any kind of expert on relationships <laughs> i suck at relationships yeah. I'm, I'm trying to do my best i want to ask you um how do you feel like society is progressing right now? Do you feel like we're in a good upswing towards fluidity and sexual, you know, uh, uh, the nature of sexuality? Or do you mm -hmm. think we're currently on a downslope from a from a like tactical, like small window standpoint? Um, I think it's always a, a crazy duality or polarity going on at the same time. Like on one end, I think that we have so much more language now. We're having conversations we never had. Mm -hmm. Like people that are really, really young are like have access to community online mm -hmm. that like my trans homegirls couldn't come out when they were in high school and I was in high school because they just simply didn't even have enough of the language and enough, you know, supportive community to do so. People are coming out, you know, as kids and getting all the love and support. Um, so I think on one end, like we are really understanding there's all these you know, like new, like gender identities that, that, you know, make people feel more seen. There's all this understanding of fluidity and like, uh, even how you present, like all of that, I feel like is shifting. And I also feel like the internet gives platforms to a lot of bigots at the same time. And so a lot of that is also really loud because all of this is loud. Mm. So I feel like it's always that duality of like, when things get really good, people who hate on it get really loud too. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of it over the past like couple of years. I think on TikTok and Twitter, a lot Twitter of places is like really that. Where we, the crazy shit yeah, is. we talk. About I don't it have one. That's it's the worst really bad. Place it's a really bad ever. place. I'm never going back. It is the worst <laughs> place yeah, I agree. ever. I don't know why toxicity runs rampant on Twitter yeah. way more than any other platform. I don't think you're supposed to like know what that many people are thinking all the time i said this on the show it's the unsafe. other day it's too many yeah. collective minds that have maybe dark or like misaligned thoughts that can echo each other and gather together to make a hashtag that's trending and in the that opposite direction just, it, it 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 really it, it makes you unable to really think for yourself majority of the time even yeah, no no it, even personally i see myself my opinions sometimes being swayed in a way they shouldn't be just because everyone else says Right. A certain thing that I may not believe, right. but everyone says it. And so as a human, I think you're inclined to just go with the herd. Yeah. And whether yeah. it's even good or bad. I mean, right. our Th brains that. are not, we were not built as humans to know, to know the thought. exact. No, no, we're, no we were made way. to be in a village with a hundred people. <laughs> yeah. We know all of the people. We all kind of have a similar feel or yeah. look. And, and there, of course, there are people that are outliers, but like, the idea that we, our brains can process this, this much information is ridiculous. I'm like, I want to wake up and think about my day. And now I know what like 200, 300 mm -hmm. people's days are starting day and for being lunch, like. Yeah. And I'm walking through like, how can I even focus <laughs> on what my day is supposed to be when like I, I'm pro oh, this person doing this and this person feels like this. And this is what's going on. This person's live. Like it's too much. It's a circus. But I, I, I do, I do want to say it feels like part of that is this groundswell recently of um and I'll, I'll keep my bias or opinion out of it but this groundswell of um anti-woke uh anti-fluidity anti-trans um kind of 
conversation. Um, what do you say to those people out there who are pushing extremely hard in the di opposite direction yeah. uh, against the progressive movement, uh, against these people who are confused or or um, or just trying to figure out what they feel in life? What would you say to them? I mean, I would say that this shit's happening regardless of if you like it or not. People are discovering themselves and being comfortable with themselves and moving through their identities, whether you like it or not, whether it makes you comfortable or not. Like it, it quite literally doesn't fucking matter how you feel about how someone else is deciding to like live their life. And people who take it beyond that step and, and you know, put put violence into it and like take it a step further, like all y'all need to just disappear off the planet if you ask me. Because that's it's not your business. Mm. Never will it ever be your business who I lay with, who they identify as, what they are, what they decide to be. Never will it be your business if I would just decide to identify something else. Like, just live your life. It promise it's so simple because on the flip side, these people are not waking up and thinking about you. They don't give a fuck what you do. I want to echo that 100%. I, I just put simply, never understood why anyone gives a fuck. Why do you care? I don't know. I don't live and know. let I, live and let live. Has you're been not the, fucking I, me. Right. I think I think I think like look, change is fucking hard for yeah. a lot of like simple humans to understand. Like yeah. you, they they know a certain thing. They've come to understand it a certain way, and not to throw the generations above us under the bus, but yeah. you know they. they Things were a lot more it's strict. You mentioned you mentioned yeah. language like they didn't have the conversations mm -mm. we were having. They couldn't. They were they the society didn't accept it as like an appropriate thing to to do or yeah. be at the time, which is yeah. which is a, like what a shitty time to be alive. I, I think I think um, suppressing who you are is probably one of the biggest pitfalls and and pains that a yeah. human can experience absolutely Qu question though and and just to play the other side because i think it's good for the conversation there's obviously a bunch of uh because i i subscribe to live and let live i don't give a fuck what you do yeah. in your life don't here's where i here's where we can conversate don't affect my life or the life of my family right ever yeah. okay and so uh, a question i would have is how do you feel about um those conversations questions and learnings bleeding into the classroom mm. uh or uh into affecting religion right so like this and this is just completely once again just me throwing it out there to yeah. you do you feel like that complicates things a little bit because someone's kid could be learning something in, in the classroom no because our world is set up for the the the, the normal state of operation to be heterosexual so if you're t already reading books where there's mom and dad, why is there not an option for there to be a book about mom and mom and dad and dad? If you're already, come on, kids are watching movies where like for sure. the, 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 the damsel in distress gets saved by the Prince Charming and that's teaching us, that's teaching little girls that like your life isn't worth it until like a magical man comes and saves you from what you're doing and kisses you on the face and then you owe him for the rest of your life. Mm. Like these, this is already the, it's just like if all we learned was white history. I mean, not to say that that's that far off because majority of what we learn right. is only white history, but why is it not just the normal option to have all the options? Mm. Like we should be able to have all the options. I don't believe in, there's no such thing as the gay agenda because the, it's only because the world is straight. It's so, it is so strange and just, uh, I'll give my opinion on it for a second, that this, the, the people on, we'll call it the right or the conservative side that have tried to blow the top off of this like, uh, world that no one knows about and this like elite side yeah. uh, and they want everyone to know all the dirty secrets oh, are yeah. are simultaneously and, and I believe that's a great thing and I want everything yeah. to be out there but are also simultaneously keeping a cap on a lot of other stuff that yeah. they mm. don't want to get out and yeah. so like either as two parties and two sides and two ways of thinking, we're both going to believe that everything's going to be out there and we're yeah. all going to be individuals to make decisions on our own and as a family unit and as mm. parents and kids or not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it does seem strange to me that some shit could get out, but some shit can't. You yeah, know? I mean, people are always, that's just, I think, a natural way of, of the unhealed human. Like, that's just life. Mm. Like, that's just... I be doing bad shit and this is what I'm going to allow you to see and this is what I'm going to allow to be known and then you can't see the other shit. And that's kind of just like society in general. That's government, that's parties, that's Control. classes. Yeah, yes, it's what it is. Yes, yeah. like yeah, this is sure. what I'm showing you. I mean, all this shit is working in this, 
entertainment ass looking ass sy like system. So yeah. it's, we, we're going to see what we're supposed to see. Ironically, I think that's where social media, Twitter, like does help. help out. It, yeah. it, it does. It does. Give I a feel voice so split down the Same, middle, right? but I'm even more on the side of pro social media because we are able to have these conversations and create these communities in yeah. which even if it, even if all it's doing is linking us up with each other, with other like-minded people mm -hmm. so that we can have these conversations even in person, I'm grateful for that. Totally. Well, and it also like people love to cancel and yeah. people love to, you know, mob against people. Yeah. But in reality, the more I have gotten to sit with it and really understand it, social media allows everyone to be exposed yeah the good and the bad yeah. and and there's a lot of harm yeah. in putting the bad in a silo and yeah. saying yo those thoughts you have they're not allowed in the in the town square but going to your conference hall and rally your 150 or 200 yeah, people that's just dangerous right it's better yeah. for us to all know what everybody's views are and to speak on it together and have a conversation about it it's I, my 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 views have changed on that a little bit in terms yeah. of deplatforming and stuff. Yeah, I think I think we have taken buzzwords like cancel and deplatform and just like ran it the fuck up <laughs> because I just think it's 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 even things. It I just think so much in the world requires nuance, like so much under we lack so much compassion for people's journeys as individuals yeah. when we like do the and I'm talking about petty canceling. I'm not talking about like you have really fucking harmful views mm. or you're abusive or mm. things like that. Like all that shit, by all means, I'm team cancel their ass forever yeah, yeah. and take everything they ever made. Like, I don't like that. If it's dangerous, you know? But there's like little petty things that's like, okay, like you might've viewed something really ridiculous or like you didn't like this artist when you were 14 mm. and now you've grown up and you like tweeted a lyric from this artist and they're like, okay, but I'm gonna pull up when you hated them when you were 14. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're canceled. And I'm like, bro, I just said maybe I didn't like that rap song when yeah. I was 14 and now I grew up and I have taste. Like, damn, <laughs> like, could my taste change now that I'm an adult? So That's I just, one, yeah. I just think like the petty things, like as a society, I think we just hype, we, we harp on that shit on social media anyways. So I think, I think what you just said like hits the nail on the head too. Like people just don't have compassion or respect for the people's journeys yeah. in life. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I think, and especially when y'all reach pedestals yeah. that, that, you get placed upon people want perfection yeah. no they fuck that they demand perfection Absolutely. yo you will be perfect Absolutely. but that's not how life works people make yeah. mistakes and they and and go through shit and i, I want to ask you this because you were really down at, at uh, probably a couple points in your life yeah, like you were sure. you were homeless at one point yeah. right how do you at your current you know hugeness stay like connected to who you were in that moment and and that humble you know hungry person and and by the way all those people that are still there how do you continue yeah. to speak and live in that in that space um i just naturally operate in a way of like understanding at all times that like this shit could disappear any moment and that i'm lucky to have it and that i like just constantly like that's why I just I have like a funny relationship with money where I'm like, it comes and it goes and it mm. happens and I take mm. care of people. And like, if I take care of people, you know, God brings it right back, you know? So I I don't operate in this naturally, like, I gotta just like get this shit and fuck everybody because I know what I came from and I'm never going back. I operate like, I could go back tomorrow. So let me just like work really hard, but let me also just be a good person and like do everything I wanna do with it and like make sure that I accomplish the things that I wanna do in the world on like, I don't want to say like a philanthropic, is that how you say that? Yeah, 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 yeah sure. I don't, not just like that, but just like energetically what I want, the mark I want to leave isn't based on like, I got to prove to y'all that I came from the bottom. Like the mark I want to leave is like, we all flow through in and out of what that looks like. And that looks like some people for that, that's mental. It's not even like I was homeless. It's like for some people, the worst part of their life is like they were depressed and about to jump off the side of whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I just kind of just always be in this constant state of like checking in with myself. How am I really feeling? How am I doing? Remember that you're grateful. Remember that you're lucky to be here because anything can happen and like nobody's better or less susceptible to losing everything they worked for than another person. It's an incredibly humble stance and headspace. You gotta the be. only stance. Yeah, it's the only be. stance. You seem super, even just listening to you, like energetically balanced. And, and I'm it sure- It took a really long time. Say, oh my God. Right? It took a lot. It took, it took- 
really understanding how important it is for the right people to be around mm -hmm. that facilitate that mm -hmm. having a serious commitment to like spiritual hygiene because we can talk about like you know religion i'm a very religious person and not christian i wanted to ask yeah, I'm in an Afro-Cuban religion, so it's a very heavy emphasis on, like, spiritual hygiene and, like, spiritual cleanliness that's actually, like, a process. Like, I have actual things that I do when I'm feeling unwell, not just, like, not just prayer. Afro-Cuban? Yeah. I've never heard of this. Enlighten me. Oh, uh, I mean, it's a it's Afro-Cuban religion called Lukumi. Um, I don't really know how to do the short form version. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it, it originated in West Africa. Do you and pray? Then, I do pray. Yeah, prayer is a big part of it. But uh, there, what's, there are what's the, other. What's the deity or like the god? Is there? Is there? There, a, there it, is. It's a monotheistic. So there is God, and then there's there's all these pantheons of, I want to say people, but <laughs> we don't. I, we don't want to like put you on saints. the spot for They're like defining. They're called the Odishas. <laughs> okay, got it. Okay. But it's originally from West Africa, and mm -hmm. then it was brought uh, to Cuba well, when Cuba was created, and it's like the birth of this traditional West African religion and Catholicism that was forced onto the slaves, and then they had to birth this religion out of secrecy and survival. Um, and we use it to this day to just like save people's lives, change people's lives, heal them, aid them, bring them out of struggles, comfort them. I mean, all things that people go to religion for, but. Is, is it heaven and hell based at all? No. No, huh? No, it's the idea that we're missing a major energetic understanding and, and gift when we're here and that this spirit is given to us to aid us in that. Mm. Yeah. And we walk with them for life and we understand everything that they have to teach us. And um, what we do after, I mean, we also, it's heavily emphasized on like working with the dead after and like on some like, you have your altar, you pray to your folks. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's honestly, Christians do the same shit. Like, I was just about to say yeah. It's all the same much, shit, yeah, honestly. <laughs> Let's be fucking for real. I and I fuck with Jesus and I still pray to Jesus too because my ancestors did. Uh, so the way I have to respect. connect with my ancestors, I play them gospel. Uh, I pray to Jesus. You know, so it's all I like that. It's all the same shit. Yeah. I like that. Isn't it funny how much overlap there is in the religions? Yeah, everybody still wants to kill each other. I think like it makes total sense. Like we all look different because we came from different places. Just like words be sounding like the same word, but in each language, they mm. just sound like slightly different version of one word. So why wouldn't our gods look like us, depending mm. on where we are, and it all not just be one big energy? Damn, that's that's that. where that's where I land. That's yeah, where I, land. I mean, dude, like people people cling to what makes them feel good. Of course, if that's what makes you feel good, and I I, I went to church one time when I was like fifteen, sixteen, and I was in Philly randomly at this church, and this lady was like. I don't give a fuck if any of this shit isn't real. This makes me, <laughs> she, she literally was like, this makes me want to get up in the morning and be a better person. Yes. Because I read these stories and this inspires me to be a better member of society and mm. a better friend and a better grandmother and a better this and da da da. If that's, if whatever that God is allows you to do that, God bless you. Yeah. Damn, I got to say shout out George again real quick. He, uh, he would be frothing he's in the a, mouth He's right a now. big a religious believer, Christian, and I, I wish he was here for this. But um, shout out I, Jesus and, yeah. and him. I, yeah. I I I got into a little <laughs> thing with with Jesus and George the other. Look, I love Jesus, but uh, Kehlani, where I f have fallen short in the religion category yeah. is, um, I get super fired up when I, I I pinpoint the intolerance that exists in religion. Oh, yeah. Like I really don't like it, and yeah. and, and so it's. Sometimes, um, I agree. Beliefs have been hard for me to accept yeah. when I know how how alienating they can be yeah. because they're being perpetuated in 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 a, what I believe to be a dangerous yeah. way. I mean, it's it's because it's become human. Yeah. God was never about being like what what the man made version mm. of it is. Like God is bigger than that. You know what I mean? Is people have taken it and monetized it. The book isn't even right. Like, shout out the Bible. There's some really cool stories in there. But, like, the book isn't even correct. You mm. know what I mean? Like, mm. it's when humans step into non-human things yeah. and commodify them and yeah. then, like, turn it into some human-ass shit. Commodify. That's really... That's really 100%. Do, you, do you connect It's like a business. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 you said it, though. I would... I... Although I, I could be quick to place judgment a certain way, if it gives people hope and purpose, it's it's wrong to be dismissive of it. No, Christ is tight. Christians be sucking sometimes. That's what I That's said. That's just the well, bottom I line. Said like, Wait, ready, ready. Ready. I didn't say anything hey. about Jesus. Hey. I said it about the folks. Oh, I'm going to say something real quick. <laughs> you hear how she bad. said it? 
It's all about how you say it, buddy. <laughs> oh, you didn't lie. say it what's, like that, what's pal. So funny she is said like, it awesome. <laughs> speaking of being so hyper aware, literally, I was like doing my research to decide if I was like going to come on the podcast. I and I was like, <laughs> Logan Paul canceled. I was like, <laughs> what has he been canceled for? Has he ever been canceled? Because I need to know before I come and up you on still here. Came and, on, huh? and it was just like Christian talk. And I was like, there. Well, you may have I'm searched like, a little shallow, but. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> no, Don't scared. cancel me for being honest. <laughs> no, 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 you're chill. Um, but that's all that came up. And I was like, oh, it seems like that, we're similarly on the same. The, hearing you talk, I, I'm. I'm we're vibing on that wavelength, yeah. I, and, and and that's that's what I was referencing. Like that was like a recent thing that yeah. happened, and like I just what no, he they're said, gonna I probably said, come for me too. But I love Jesus for real. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Great I just guy. I just fucking hate intolerance. I hate yeah, it. I, I mean, I hate feeling people feeling like they can't be themselves because of like a belief system, a, a, yeah. a book of uh, stories. Yeah, that, any book. I don't, and, I don't care and, what it and, is. And all of this, all of this intolerance is anti what Jesus. Would the exact opposite. What yeah. would Jesus want for y'all to not act like fuckheads Love and weaponize everything that he is yeah, yeah. to, you know, against other people? I thought we were supposed to be peace, love, Jesus, God. Love all your babies. neighbor, always. Right, right, so. Do you do you connect with any of the other uh, um, people in your space? Because uh, I'm going to slaughter this name right now. Uh, Janae Aiko. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? Jan I think it's Aiko. Uh, do, you, are you, do you connect with her at all? That's my big sister. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Sh She's super cool. Because she's super into... Okay, I'm going to say something. I don't know if it makes it or not, but I actually... She was selling her house yeah. in uh, California, yeah. and I went to look at it. I was yeah. going to buy it. And she had some crazy crystals and crazy... <laughs> yo, like, she coyotes had, up there. Actually, oh, a ton. No, because she's like in the mountains. <laughs> yeah. And coyotes. she had a whole room. You said the crystals. I'm like <laughs> well, freaky, <laughs> freaky dogs. <laughs> well, that too. A coyote she killed had a my whole dog. room. Coyote killed your dog? Oh, you my like Yorkie. Coyotes. Coyote killed my Pomeranian. <gasps> Are Yo. we trauma bonding? <laughs> R.I.P. Franklin. What did you do? Anything? Because I um, killed the motherfucker. You killed the coyote? Yeah, took two we years. We couldn't find... You tracked it? You <laughs> found years. the exact coyote? He came back? Yeah. They're the <gasps> neighborhood coyotes. Ruthless. Territory. They kill 12 dogs a year. Someone had to do it. Oh, I fuck with you. I fuck with that. Someone had to do it. I took this... That was my fucking boy. His name yeah. was Kong. Cute little like, oh, golden Pomeranian. No. They hopped my fence, too. It was like an abduction mission. They, oh, three, it was God. premeditated, oh, and they yeah. took him. saw it on camera? Yeah. Saw we saw it on camera. Yeah. That's how we even knew, because he was <sighs> such a, like... A, like such a clingy little dog that, like... I'm like, I'm walking around the house. He's not with any uh. of us. He was the type of dog you'd be like, Franklin, and he would just, like, run from yeah. across the everywhere. And I'd be like, okay, so once we, once we didn't get a response we started checking the cameras and it was just Ugh. it was so quick we had a, we had gates that had like big spaces wait why is this the same story it's the same it is the same story but he went out like such a g just like barking? i had a dalmatian and i have a pit and my pit is a, a big goofy girl i got and a pit too look at us are we friends <laughs> and then my and then the dalmatian was like new and i had got him for my ex-girlfriend and he went out to play with the coyote. Mm. So he runs through the gate. He's like kind of big. So they're like, and my, I promise you, my pit couldn't get her head through the oh, gate. She's just no. like, no. And he went out there barking, trying to save his brother oh, and then got snatched. No. So that's what Kong did too. Kong stood up to the coyote and was barking at oh it. Oh my God, we have such gangster little, I'm proud gangsta of them. Dogs. And gangsta they have like his little ashes, like. Uh, we like picture. we got it. We found no as much as we could. There was not that much. Oh, you guys are exact. Or... Now you're exact. I got a notification on the Citizen app that a little severed dog's head had been found three miles away. Oh my God! No, the neighbors told my security, who's like literally like a Yorkie. Like he has like eight Yorkies. <sighs> He's a Yorkie man. He found my dog, actually. Kalani, I dressed in fucking camouflage and, and went in a tree <laughs> to find the coyote. Yeah. I'm not like, to like say that, pissed. not to make this like that, but like that would have been a really incredible <laughs> vlog to watch. Like, no, that no, he that's so sad. But like, I would have been, I would have been like right behind you, like fuck this coyote, like there, team you. It, there's a people are divided. I think with the, some, some, I think, oh, I think because maybe they're like coyote activists. Now fuck the coyote coyotes. activists. I, don't fuck. I got a grudge, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm not gonna be out here slaughtering coyotes or like random ones at that. But like, bro, stay no, no, the fuck I away from them. my pets. Stay like. away. They, and they, if they hadn't Ruthless. Have hopped my fence and premeditated it, trust right, me, you this came was up over here first. Like, on my turf. I was taught when you smack me, I get to smack you back. Hundred percent, hundred percent. We start smacked with a bow and arrow. A bow and arrow. Straight to the heart. Okay, this is different. I'm we wearing gotta... I'm wearing plaid. What'd you expect? I'm from Ohio. I want to 
learn. I feel like I'd be good at it. Maybe you should Probably. give her the body. Maybe you should give her the taxidermy body. You tax to rappers to be out. He's a bit sick. Fuck him. Where, where do he be chilling? Sick. Where, where they, is his where is his taxidermist? He's hanging body? out at the at the taxidermist still. You I still I, haven't picked him up. Nah, picked two years. Up? Two fucking years. I'm actually pissed, dude. If my taxidermist is watching this, honestly, keep that coyote, bro. <laughs> I don't even give a shit anymore. I've I've forgiven him. The oh, I, you taxidermied the coyote. Yeah, not my yeah. dog. My dad did that though with his dog though. Look, it's okay, a, okay, in our okay. family. I thought you taxidermied the dog, and I was like, oh, this is very serious. Oh no, 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 Couldn't. no, no, no. He what only had what the kind head. of freak would do that? Oh, I, that's why I was like, all right, I wasn't no, no. judging. Well, what do you mean what like, kind of freak would do that? Your, your dad has a rug. That but taxiderming the coyote. <laughs> I mean, what were you gonna do with it after? I don't know. <laughs> like, look, I I got that motherfucker. Put him on your wall, like those, like those, like elk. So, so I'm not, I'm not that either. Like I don't know. I, I didn't know you said the plaid, bro. I, don't, I, know, I know. If you I know. Can go to your house, and you have like, <laughs> like deers, like deers on the wall. everywhere. No, no, the dead animals. Like I grew up that way, which I think is where like okay. half of it comes from. You be hunting and shit. I yeah, until I was like 15. I was like, why am I fucking doing this? Like I don't, I don't need this meat like to survive. <laughs> I also like these deer yeah. are so just. Animals living their fucking life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't Good. find the sport in it. Yeah, like like a lot of hunters do. And I got doofuses. respect for hunters that that. Yeah, it's some doofus shit for the, sure. The, <laughs> no, not the hunters. Shit. The the deer. Oh, I think you, I think hunting for for pure sport doofuses. is some doofus shit. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. I really don't get no, it. No, for sure. I I agree with that. I, a lot of the hunters now are 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 staying in the sport and people are accepting it because they do eat. They do just eat the meat. Yeah, head, I'm, I'm head to pro tail. Indigenous. Uh, indigenous lifestyle. Right, like, right, right. That's where I, after that, I draw the line. Like They would tell you some deer are overpopulating. They got their okay. arguments. Okay. By the way, I don't know if they're legit or not. Again, I, gr <laughs> no, I, I grew they, up I this way. I, I grew up are. this way. So, like, I I see both sides. Um, yeah. But I, I was willing to put on my hunter orange when the coyote killed my dog again. That's no, when the hunter came out. If I, had, if I had talent in that... Spectrum. You probably would kick some ass, yeah. What? And I would have been torturous. I I hate that. I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, who's the sick on that? That was my boy. I would have been like, I would have been like talking to it and shit right before, like, yeah, I'm gonna like fuck dude, you up. Dude, I just like, had the craziest vision of Kaylani waterboarding a, a coyote. coyote. <laughs> with, like, Where Chinese is he? Water Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is getting borderline animal abuse, and they're gonna come for me. Nah, so nah, those, no, those coyotes are sick, dude. Sick fuck. They're hunters. They're hunting our pets. Bro. What do you What do you do with all your gratitude? I'm listening to you talk. You have a lot of it. And yeah. it's, it's great. It's such a good quality that a human can have. Um, Thank you. But I'm sure you have an overwhelming f sense of it. What do you do with it? Yeah, sometimes it's hard not to be toxically grateful. Great. Because like, oh, that's the thing. You can be like, honestly, anything is okay mm. because I'm just happy to be here. Um, so it took me a long time. I feel like there's like a pendulum thing that happens with every single emotion that you experience on earth. Like you, you're on one side of you have to swing all the way to the other side to get back to the mm. middle. So I went from like, I mean, I was always grateful, but I did have a moment where I was like, everything sucks and I hate it here. And then I had to swing all the way back. And now I'm back in the middle where like I can honor how I feel when I'm feeling without it taking away from my gratitude. Mm. And uh, really understanding that that doesn't take away from how grateful you are for everything. Mm. Um, but I also just make sure that I share it. You know, I share. Give it out. I share it like shit. I'm like. I've been to Vegas a bunch. I got homies who never been to Vegas. We're going to stay in a fancy little place. You guys want to go do some fun shit? Like, mm. I'm bringing all the homies who never <laughs> been here. Like, you never left the country before you're coming on tour. Like, shit like that. Like, that's my favorite shit because those are the moments where when people did that for me, that changed my life and allowed me totally. to see what kind of path that was different from what I thought I was going to have growing up. So I just make sure that any chance I get, I'm like, Taking all the homies and my family with me. So cool. I'm gonna so, I'm gonna steal that from you. Do it. You got to. Yeah, take me somewhere, dude. That's what will change. You, <laughs> you never know. Give me, what give me some experience equity. you give somebody that they will look back and be like, "This was the catalyst for me changing my own life." Damn. I occasionally get the get the message, the 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 gratitude message. I'm sure you said it out. People have put you on or believed in you, maybe even before you believed yourself. Mm -hmm. Like those are the moments, man. Yeah. I, I remember that forever. Some people shape your life in a certain way and like you got to get that respect It can be so minor. Back. It can be so minor. So just as much as, as any chance you get to like spark anything in somebody else, just grab it because you just never know what moment it was for them and it could be yours. Mm. So. Damn, that's a great way to end. But I wanted to ask a quick question about that because <laughs> you seem to know how to talk about gratitude, like yeah. without scaring people. 
I come from the East Coast. Uh-huh. You come from Oakland. You got to be grateful. Okay, like, <laughs> do you do you also kind of read the room? Because there's some rooms you walk into where people are like, yo, how the fuck are you today? And you're yeah. like, man, I am just so grateful to be. <laughs> and they're yeah. just like, don't you ever fucking talk to me like that. Like, they're not on that frequency. Yeah. So They're my, like, my, I hate it here. Yeah, 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 leave me alone. Don't ever talk to me again. How yeah. do you start to, how do you start to, like, shift those people that don't even know what gratefulness means and if they do they they fucking hate it into yeah. that type of thinking i mean was what's annoying about me and i feel like maybe it came from years of like having to read the room because of like my job mm. since i was a kid or maybe like something in childhood i don't know i asked my therapist um i feel like i'm overly perceptive a hundred percent of the time like even as i'm speaking in an interview i'm literally like there's a lot of things to consider here. <laughs> like, don't get canceled. Say the right thing. Like, blah, blah, blah. Make sure you're using the right language. Like, I'm that way with humans. So I'm like, also, somebody yelling at me. And I'm like, oh, they probably got yelled at. Like, maybe it's not the right way to respond. I only really d- don't apply that when it's, like, inherently violent. Or, like, mm. you just did some crazy fucked up shit. Like, it's different when someone's like, hey, fuck you, bro. Or, like, someone's like... Yeah, suck all that shit up. Or like, I don't, I don't want to have the conversation right now. I'm like, oh, you're probably having a bad day. Like, you're probably That's having a-, a bad day. You're probably been through something. Or like, somebody didn't allow you to be grateful, and therefore you got hardened about that conversation. But mm. I'm just in constant, like, inner child viewing of people. Like, what is, where did this come from? And like, I'm sitting here having a conversation with somebody, and I'm like, oh, like you probably just didn't know this yet, or like you haven't learned this, or like. Someone made you hate this. So it's just a constant like. Damn. You got to talk to people like kids because we really are all just. Or not talk to people like kids, but understand people like kids. Yeah. Because in mature... comparison to society and the world, we, we're kids. We're babies. So we're all doing, I guess, we're doing, we're, we're, we're what is it? Playing with the hands that we're dealt. You're wise beyond your years. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, like way wise beyond your years. Uh, you, think it's, you think it's from the. Just sheer the amount trauma. of experience. I mean, essentially, I mean, the jokes aside, I, I don't nah, know. I, no bullshit. Yeah. I find, I find, and he, he's the same way. It's probably why we're friends. I only fuck with people who've been through some shit. You yeah. I can't relate to people who are perfect. You cannot. I mean, it's funny because to be on to be perceptive again, those people have also been through shit, mm. and they probably have some expected perfection thing that they do to themselves. I think through a lot of like therapy and re- and reading a lot of like therapizing ass books, like I tend to therapize a lot of shit. Mm. So even those people that it's like, it seems like this, it isn't always like that. And the only people I have a real fucking problem with in that perfect realm is like the toxic positive or the toxic, toxic perfect. Toxic positive. Those like, are the ones I'm scared. That's what I was just talking about. Yeah, They're like, scary. You could you could seem like it's you ain't Dylan. never been through nothing nah, all your Dylan. life. It's but. Dylan. Nah, he's toxic positive. <laughs> You're always so damn happy. Dylan. <laughs> we love we love always happy. But yeah, what I don't great. love is you're not allowed to be sad Correct. because uh, look at all this shit. I'm like, bro, we exist on Earth in 2023. Everybody got something that's like this is crazy right even if you're you're just being susceptible to all the fucking terrible energy that's going on in our world don't nobody have a reason to just be fucking 100 percent all the time like let's be for real Hmm. so let's as long as we're being for real about it and we're encouraging you know feeling better in whatever way that looks like for somebody as long as it's not hurting other people facilitate it it's authenticity to yourself yeah. at all times with a with a backbone of positivity. Yeah, I, I don't want to like say we should just let people sit in their bullshit because I mm. think part of why we're here is to encourage each other to get back on their path when they fall off of it. But definitely a part of that literal and integral part of that is to hold that space and say like, it's like, it's like when you vent to your friends, you have the one friend that's always like, hey, but look around, we're all so grateful. But yeah. you need the friend who goes, I hear you, that does suck. That doesn't feel so good. That does suck when that happens. You're right. I totally feel you. Let's change that. Mm. Let's move through it. You want to go take a walk? You want to go do this? Those are the kind of like thinking or that's the kind of thinking that I feel like shapes how we are there for each other and like how people can actually get out of it because mm. people want to be heard first. For and I sure. used to be the friend that was like, look around, like everything's beautiful. You have no reason to feel sad. And I was, I got chin checked one time by a oh, friend no. who was like, bro, I really just wanted you to listen. And I was like, oh, okay. Because you resu- yeah, because you you resorted to that like go to answer to their yeah. situation, which is the sun is shining, you're breathing yeah. air right and now, and that comes from a trauma of me feeling like damn, someone could hit rock bottom and I didn't help. Mm. That comes from me being like 
I've lost friends to like deciding to leave. You know what I mean? So when someone expressed that to me in the past, my instant trauma response has been like, Anything to make you feel better. But it's, yeah, but it's, 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 it's difficult. It's yeah. never super simple because what you're saying to them is also rooted in the supremest form of gratitude, which yeah. is be grateful with what you have, whatever that is. Yeah. And so, yo, helping other people, there is no right or wrong way to it. We yeah. all do the absolute best we can to help people. I'm approached with that opportunity every single day. And I'm so grateful for the ability to impact people's lives, yeah, whether it be mental health, substance abuse, whatever it is. And I'm only able to do the best that I can with it. Yeah. I, I'm not perfect at it, but I try to do the best I can. You know, it's all you can do. It's all we're here to do. I want to ask one more thing. Yeah. Then we'll let you go. Uh, you used the term all your eggs in one basket earlier, which I which I assume is probably a, a, a large part of the reason of your success. Thank you. But uh, your tattoos, <laughs> you are tatted. Hella. I was doing some research on your Instagram. So many, you went all in. Yeah, I was really young <laughs> and I had a lot of friends with tattoo guns and I got one and I was like, this looks fucking tight. <laughs> and I just fucking... Kept going. You never used the the painkillers or got put to sleep because you know that's a put to sleep. You know that's a thing now. now. Yeah, it's you know big. what though? I feel like uh, I was actually watching a TikTok. I actually fuck with TikTok so much because I be learning so much yeah. shit on there. But an anesthesiologist was just saying like that's not healthy because of what's going into your blood while they're trying to like. I don't oh, know. Really? But also oh. just like, I just feel like we should be saving the anesthesia for things that actually require. Anesthesia. Well, there's plenty of anesthesia. But if y'all want to put me to sleep to remove some tattoos, <laughs> I'm with it. That painful? I'm oh, so painful. Worse? My God. Worse than getting I'm it? currently getting my knuckles, like all of my knuckle tats removed. And when I tell you that shit feels like someone took like a burning hot sledgehammer Oof. and just started like cracking Oof. my knuckles. Oh my God. You're like, you know what? I'll keep them. Fuck it. <laughs> now I found somewhere in downtown LA that like, Injects like lidocaine. Oh yeah, yeah, it numbs the area. So that if I can put that on the painkiller scale, that's cool. I I think I think with tattoos, the the people getting put to sleep is actually getting some pushback because isn't isn't part of like that mark on your body? Yeah, come on, gangsta. You gotta earn it. Earn yeah, it. pussy smells like pussy. In <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're doing it because it speeds. It makes it a more yeah. efficient process. Of course, nobody can get through a full back piece in one day. Yeah, but also like you're... what I'm seeing is like people who just want to be tatted and don't really care about the tats, which is like that's also fine. Like mm. I don't really give a fuck why yeah, you're tatted yeah. because all, a lot of mine is bullshit too. Right. But like, damn, you got four people working on you right yeah. now while you're asleep, just covering the whole rest of your body. It's like, what about when you have kids one day and like you want to put like a little baby foot right there? Like your kid's name is like, yeah. you said, fuck it. You just did it all in six oh, hours. So you're <laughs> saying like, look at it as like a cascading process. I'm like, of bro, like, save your space. Yeah. As someone who's like really tatted, I really wish that when I was younger, I would have went slow and damn. I would have taken my time. I would have way better art. I would have different art. I would probably still be... I would be less tatted, but I would still have tattoos. But Damn, it would I be never, different. I never thought about that. That's so interesting because there's so many people right now I, that are doing it and they're like, this is the best artist right now. Yeah, it's the best artist no, right, right now. now. Yeah. So what Dude. is the best and artist style, in 2034 style look like? always changes, right? That's now everybody's into those little like fine line patchwork. Like you look like right. you got patches everywhere. Like people about to fucking love sleeves again in three years. They're going to wish you had a full sleeve. Like it... Art just changes. Like, also, there's all type of new technology and shit. Like, it's just getting better. It's like, I had fucking, I was getting tatted in fucking people's kitchens and, and garages and, and shit in Oakland. Like, yeah. My knuckles are stick and poke Damn. at the park. Like, imagine oh you got your whole back done in <laughs> Savage. <laughs> Damn. That's crazy. Imagine you got your whole back done and then you found out there was like 3D tattoos coming out like the next year or something. Nah, you, you know what it. pisses me off? They have that style that's like super personal that's like looks like a, a literal child like just took a lead pencil and uh, just like uh. did ugly shit everywhere. I'm like, I get that. That's really fucking cool right now. <laughs> yeah. But like you're, I, I don't know if this is going to be your aesthetic or even your personality in like 10 years. Or I, 10 days. That's how I feel about my face tattoos. I'm like... I is there to, one right here? There's one here. Yeah, I thought I saw one. There's one, one up here and yeah. there's one here. I've changed as a person and especially in like my levels of like how I appreciate feeling soft and like it, it leaks out into like my self-care and like mm -hmm. how I look. And sometimes I'm like, no matter what the fuck I do, I look like I beat people up. Or I look like, <laughs> or no matter what I do, like I want to put on a really nice dress and like feel like I'm not, like I buttered my skin all up and I feel all soft and I feel really feminine. And then I'm like, damn, I'm blasting. 
<laughs> no, you could never you pull cool. blast off. Cool. You could never See, pull blast off. See, I look mad off. cool. Cool. But that's what I'm saying. Sometimes I don't want to look cool. You want to look? I want to look like real soft and like mm. really not. I hate to say clean because I really don't like when people associate dirtiness with tattoos. Like I had to fight those dirty allegations right, for right. fucking years uh. because I was one of the first like tatted young R&B girls. Yeah. And um, but there is like a like really like a fresh face, fresh everything mm. that sometimes you don't get that shit when but you're covered it's, in dude, tattoos. It's it's holistic. The whole vibe and what you have going on is clean as fuck, and Thank you look you. great. <laughs> Thank Kaylani, you. I'm, you can't I, I do any I beat the wrong. dirty allegations. Thank <laughs> you. you beat the dirty allegations. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, this was great. This was great. Thank you for having me. I was fucking scared. So, so they 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 told us that, and we found out through our a couple of our guests that were like kind of I guess we're intimidating like people are scared to come no, on here no you know what it is is she's there like you're is, a bitch nah, you're a f- <laughs> there is just an energy I hate that I said energy so much so corny but there is a repertoire I guess of like cis male podcast for sure it's a it's a it's a meme it's a meme that's like a lot of these fucking podcasts a lot of these people need to be deplatformed off the strength that they're just bull they're just spewing bullshit yeah and I had I seen clips, but that obviously I haven't seen enough like of the full ones. I'm I'm probably gonna tap in after this because my best friend is mm. like they're great entrepreneurs. You learn a lot about oh, business. Like okay. my my best well, friend loves y'all well, thank literally. You. Thank you. Thank um, you. But I think it was just that I just I have definitely I have my own interview trauma. I have internet trauma. Like I have definitely sure. like. I didn't know how much you guys knew about me or just like what we'd be talking about. I'm like, I'm about to sit across from like, for lack of better words, two <laughs> grown white dudes. <laughs> doofuses. No, no. For real. I, no, for real. I didn't know what the levels of it was about to be, but this was, I had a really great time. Amazing. And a that makes me happy. And we had like, I feel like really valuable conversations. Yeah. People people are going to love this episode. Yeah. Damn. You, you absolutely crush it. That's I, great. I, I want to say thank you for, thank for you. trusting us. No, I'm grateful. I'm happy. Thank you. I was like, are they going to troll me? I'm going to troll no. them back. Hell yeah. Oh, you, Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, this was great. Great. Uh, if you guys don't follow Kalani on Instagram and all of her social medias, it's just at Kalani. Literally. Right? Everywhere. With, with an H. There's a hidden H in there. Yeah. Why, what's up with the heart? She's going on tour. Oh, the tour. tour. Australia and Asia, right? Australia and Asia. And then when are you in Australia? possible added things. I'm in Australia. We start in a couple weeks, actually. We'll be there in February. I'll be in Asia in February. All right. Never well, mind. <laughs> it's fun while it lasted. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Kaylani, thank you guys for listening to this episode of Impulsive. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. We will see you next time. Take it easy. Peace.